The world of video games has many recognizable icons. Mario, Link, Sonic, Pac-Man, just to name a few. They all made huge impacts on the gaming market and will forever be etched in the annals of time as legends. Mega Man may not fall into the same category as those previously mentioned, but it's pretty safe to say that he will be considered an upper echelon franchise. It all started in 1987 when Capcom released the original Mega Man for the NES, also known as Rockman in Japan. The Japanese version used a different cover art, which the US changed feeling that the anime look would turn off the American audience. So we ended up with this. Mega Man looks like he's in his 50s, he's carrying a gun instead of having the built-in cannon he has in the game. His colors are all wrong, and I don't know what the background is supposed to resemble. Anyway, onto the plot. In the year 200X, scientist Dr. Light and his assistant Dr. Wily designed humanoid robots, almost a human-robot hybrid combination. The first two robots were Rock, who would serve as Dr. Light's tool assistant, and Roll, who would do the housekeeping. The next six robots were designed for industrial purposes, hoping later to mass produce them and put a lot of people out of jobs. Cutman would cut down trees, Gutsman would pick up large rocks and such, Iceman would explore the Arctic, Bombman would blow holes in blocked up caves, Fireman would burn up logs to make fuel, and Electman would provide low cost electricity. So Dr. Light gets all kinds of credit and accolades, and it pisses off Dr. Wily, who completely snaps and steals the six robots, reprogramming them and sending them in on a rampage. Rock volunteers to be converted into a fighting robot, so Light obliges and he becomes Mega Man. Now, none of this is mentioned in the game itself, but it is summarized in the manual, and it does get brought up to speed in the many sequels that follow. The game starts off at a select screen where you can choose any of the six Robot Masters levels you want. At the end of each stage, you'll do battle with the Robot Master and steal his weapon after you win. After clearing all six Robot Masters, you'll go through four levels at Dr. Wily's castle before beating the game. The fact that you can choose the first six levels in any order is unique and interesting. It also requires strategy, as the weapons you'll pick up will do major damage to certain enemies and more importantly, the Robot Masters. You'll control Mega Man armed with your plasma cannon as your default weapon, which has infinite ammo. But the weapons you get from the Robot Masters have a limited amount, so watch the meters. However, if you run out, that doesn't mean you're all done with that weapon, as you can always replenish your weapon's energy by finding these capsules that enemies will leave behind every once in a while. They'll also leave behind life energy capsules to fill up your health. You'll also find these balls that give you bonus points, and once in a while you'll find this Mega Man head that will give you an extra life. Playing Mega Man is fun as shit. It's always fun blasting your way through enemies, you have to strategize, and you get a variety of weapons to choose from once you acquire them. The Robot Masters all have different tendencies, attacks, strengths, and weaknesses. The level's designs, graphics, and enemies all differ from each other as well, so there's a lot of variety. The graphics are good, although the background so often could use a little something to spice up the plainness. Also, sometimes you run into the spots that seem pretty familiar, seeing as how they're pretty much duplicated from an earlier portion of the level. The music is awesome, although the sound quality is kind of boxy. There's really not a whole lot of flaws in Mega Man, aside from the minor ones I mentioned earlier. The game is definitely difficult, despite the fact that there's less levels in this game than in the sequels. Mainly the tweaks and additions in the sequels would give you an edge. Like for example, if you get hit by an enemy and land in a pit of spikes, you die as soon as you hit it. In Mega Man 2 and beyond, the brief invincibility that you'll get after being hit can be used to run through the spikes if you happen to land in them. There are plenty more examples from other Mega Mans, but let's stick with the original game for now. Opinions may differ on what the best order to choose is as far as which Robot Masters to contend with, but I'm going to walk you through the one that I've always used and it's pretty much the most common. First select Bomb Man. The clear points of beating Bomb Man may not be 70,000 points, it's never consistent, and it never matters because points mean jack shit in this game. Toward the beginning, stand up against these walls to let the debris from the bombs just sail right over you before you move on. Don't let these assholes knock you off the ladder and down onto the next screen, cause, cause even if you kill any of them, they'll respawn as soon as you climb back up. So grab the ladder as soon as you can take a hit and this energy capsule should repair any damage done. 
This guy Sniper Joe will stand right up close to you with a shield out. You can't hit him unless he pulls away to fire or he jumps in the air for no reason. When you get to the large area of spikes, watch out for this flying shelled robot thing that fires in all directions. You can only kill it when it opens up to shoot, so time your shot right for when it opens and run. If you get hit, you could fall into the spikes and get wiped out. Not long after that, there's this little area where Sniper Joe will be guarding an extra life. Just stand here and let him jump into your line of fire. Right after this is Bomb Man. He's pretty easy to beat. The trick is to get as close to him as you can and fire constantly as he leaps over you. He won't throw his bombs unless he's a good distance away from you, so keep as close as possible. He'll eventually change it up and leap far away where he'll try to get his shots in. Avoid the explosions and stay aggressive. He'll be done in no time and you'll get the hyper bomb. This weapon is alright. It does damage and the explosion is pretty big, but I don't advise using it much seeing as how it takes a few seconds for the bomb to actually blow up. You will need it for your next big battle though, Gutsman. You'll run into these hard hats right away, although in Mega Man 1 they're called Mets. They would go on to evolve in later Mega Mans by gaining some mobility and accessories, but in this version they just stand in one spot and fire in three directions, real easy to kill. Then you get to this part with these platforms that slide across a wire or something. Jump on the platforms, but remember that when the connecting piece of the platform slides across the rip in the wire, the platform will drop. So time your jumps right, especially on the bottom platform where you'll run into a series of these jumps. This level is pretty short and sweet, but right before the end, watch out for this large blue cycloptic robot with a suction cup for feet. He's slow, but he takes a lot of hits to kill, and he'll dish out a lot of damage if he hits you. Now you've reached Guts Man. Equip your bombs and keep throwing them in his general direction. You can only throw one at a time, so you'll have to wait until the one you're using explodes. While you're waiting, Gutsman's gonna be jumping around like a fucking maniac. Whenever he lands, he'll cause an earthquake and you'll lose your footing, unless you jump just before he lands. He'll attack by catching a giant block of rock that falls from the ceiling and hurling it at you. If you're on your ass, he'll probably connect with the rocks. Also, he'll jump from side to side too, so he may veer away from the bombs. So try to throw it in the general area as opposed to hitting his location exactly, since the explosions cover a lot of ground. After defeating Gutsman, you'll acquire the power arm. This weapon can only be used in specific situations. If you see a large block that looks something like this, you can pick it up and throw it. Otherwise, you can't do shit with this weapon, but it'll be very instrumental in getting a key item later on in the game. You can also use it at the very beginning of the next level, Cutman stage. Early on, you climb up these ladders, making your way through several screens fending off these annoying assholes that fire and hide in their shells. Now, they can't shoot backwards, so if you ever get a chance to stand behind them, do so. They fire semi-rapidly, and, and with a few on the screen at once, you're probably going to take a few hits. Soon after, you'll go up a few more screens in similar fashion with these red suction cup fucks that move horizontally or vertically from wall to wall, or ceiling to floor. All you really have to do is watch their patterns and shoot whenever they're away from you. Then this asshole makes another appearance. Try to maneuver yourself in between his line of fire, but more importantly, stay away from the spikes. One hit could send you off and you're dead as Dillinger. But the bullets themselves don't do too much damage, so don't worry yourself sick over it. Instead, worry yourself sick over this. Ugh, I really hate this motherfucker. The power arm can do enough damage to take him out in two shots if you're quick enough. Otherwise, try to wait for his high jump and run under him. Now you'll get the cup man. He's aggressive and will charge at you before chucking the rolling cutter blade that he wears so proudly on his head. So equip the power arm and pick up the blocks on the left right away and chuck them at him. If you connect with both shots, he'll die. If you miss with one or both shots, use the arm cannon the rest of the way, which does pretty good damage and pushes him back a few steps. When he throws the cutter at you, just keep firing and don't take your eyes off the cutter because Cutman won't move, but the rolling cutter will boomerang back, and it does some pretty moderate damage if you get hit. Once you take care of him, you'll get the rolling cutter, which has its share of uses, but it's pretty slow and the angle is kinda awkward. It does boomerang its way back, much like it did for Cutman, so you have more than one chance sometimes to hit your target.